Lion plants show up in the fossil record around 475 million years ago. They are currently subdivided into groups that are not always monophyletic, but are convenient terms for quick classifications based on vascular systems and seed production. Here are some of those major groups. Nonvascular bryophytes like mosses and liverworts, vascular seedless plants like ferns and fern allies, and vascular seed plants like gymnosperms and angiosperms. Angiosperms are the flowering plants. Evolutionarily, they are the most recent and taxonomically the most diverse. They are classified into the phylum Anthophyta, or in some references as Magnoliophyta. These three terms are synonymous and reflect ongoing changes to plant classification schemes as new data become available. We can further divide angiosperms into three classes, the basal dicots, the eudicots, and the monocots. These names come from the embryonic leaves that emerge at germination, which are known as cotyledons. Each of these groups is then subdivided into orders and families. Botanists focus largely on the family, genus, and species level. Most flowering plant species are eudicots, also known as the true dicots. Here are examples of eudicot species that are naturalized or native to Indiana forests and prairies. For angiosperms, the reproductive structures are the most important traits for species identification, as these are the traits that are the most conserved at the family and genus level. Reproductive structures include the flowers, seeds, pollen, and fruits. This cultivated rose is one example out of the many thousands of species of eudicot angiosperms. Notice the arrangement of petals and sepals on the flower. Also, take note of the veins in the leaves and the branching patterns they form. A lengthwise cut reveals how multiple stamens, the male reproductive structures on flowers, surround the pistil which is the female reproductive structure. Wild species in the rose family generally have five round petals, five sepals, and numerous stamens surrounding the pistil, as seen in this Carolina rose and wild blackberry. Eudicot vascular arrangements are also noticeably different from the monocot vascular arrangements. In eudicot stems, the bundles of vascular xylem and phloem are arranged in a circular pattern, just below the dermal tissue. If we take a thin cross-section of the stem and add stain, the arrangement of vascular bundles should come into view under a microscope. This lily is a good example of a monocot angiosperm. Monocots usually have flower parts that come in sets of three, three petals, three sepals, and three or six stamens. The pistil flares out into a three-lobed stigma. Notice the veins on the leaves. Monocot veins run parallel to each other, unlike what we see in eudicots. Dissecting the flower provides a closer look at the number of petals, sepals, anthers, and the pistil. Here's a look at a microscopic cross-section of a lily flower bud, where you can clearly see the three-lobed stigma, and surrounding the stigma are six anthers. Microsporocytes are visible in the anthers. These are the cells that will develop into pollen. Monocot vascular arrangements are uniformly distributed in the ground tissue of stems. To demonstrate this arrangement, 
I've prepared a thin section from this asparagus stem and treated it with dye. You can see that the vascular bundles consisting of xylem and phloem are regularly spaced throughout the stem. Take a moment to observe the images in this video and in your own neighborhoods and stores that you frequent. Or spend time in a nearby park or forest and pay attention to the patterns in the leaves and the stems that you encounter. Are there traits in common among the different plant species? Perhaps the shape or arrangement of leaves? The margins of the leaves? Or the number and arrangement of flower parts? With close attention to detail, you will soon see for yourself what botanists see when they encounter these beautiful organisms.